Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just be officially um, updating you on some more uh, latest uh, news. Uh, so uh, there is uh, lots to uh, negotiate um, on this uh, video uh, today. Uh, so do uh, do you uh, believe, you know, that uh, Lauren uh, Blanc, you know, would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, Manchester United? Now, recent reports um, have been uh, speculating out saying that Lauren Blanc, you know, would be uh, keen um, on replacing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, at Manchester United because obviously we do know that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is under a serious pressure at the football club, uh, reflecting um, on our uh, disastrous uh, start to the season. Obviously, you know, we are enjoying um, our worst start to a Premier League season uh, for uh, three uh, decades. And, you know, we have actually you know, got quite um, a lot of uh, managers um, on our agenda, you know, who could uh, replace uh, Solskjaer um, at the football club. But, yeah, uh, Laurent Blanc, um, obviously, you know, has been uh, managerless, um, you know, since uh, 2016, uh, where I think he did uh, step down um, as PSG manager. He did serve um, around uh, three uh, years with PSG. Um, obviously, you know, before um, he was um, at PSG, um, he actually you know, uh, served a couple of years with France. And before he, uh, before he was at France, I think he served um, around uh, three years uh, with Bordeaux, where he did um, actually you know, begin um, his managerial uh, career. So overall, he's been managing now, uh, managing now uh, for quite uh, some time. Um, don't forget, you know, uh, during his playing career, you know, he did uh, serve um, a couple of uh, years um, at Manchester United. And I think recently, you know, uh, Laurent uh, Blanc, you know, was linked uh, with a vacant uh, managerial uh, position um, at Leon, uh, but I think you know he, he didn't uh, agree uh, you know terms uh, with Leon, so he obviously you know hasn't got the job with Leon. I think obviously Leon, um, of course, um, have recommended you know uh, someone else in. So is there a chance you know that you know Laurent Blanc you know uh, could uh, come uh, to uh, Manchester United? Uh, like I mentioned to you yesterday, uh, Max Allegri, you know he's uh, you know our top priority. You know he's the top priority you know for Manchester United. So he, we actually identified him um, as our uh, primary candidate. I was reading their reports uh, yesterday and it did say that, you know, Max Allegri, you know, um, you know want, wants uh, Patrice Evra as part um, of his uh, coaching staff, you know, if he's uh, to take over um, at Manchester United. And also it did get mentioned the other week that Max Allegri um, said he will take over at Manchester United, you know, if he's assured, you know, to be given the job uh, within uh, the next uh, few weeks. So again, you know, do you think Max Allegri, you know, would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, Manchester United? Now, Max Allegri um, has only been managerless you know, um, well, not he hasn't been man just for long. I think he's only been man just now um, about three or four months. Don't forget, you know, he stepped down um, as Juventus manager um, at the end um, of last season. Uh, Max Allegri, you know, did serve um, around uh, five uh, years there uh, with Juventus. Obviously, the vast majority of his silverware he's won, obviously, you know, has a well, well, obviously, you know, came um, at Juventus and that. Um, obviously, he's been managing now all in all for around 16 or 17 years. He began his managerial career um, in 2003. Um, I think he's actually, you know, learning English. He's Max. Um, a league, you know, in preparation, you know, for um, his potential move. Like I mentioned, um, he is um, in his uh, 50s. Um but so far, you know, he's actually you not know, spent uh, the entirety um, of his uh, managerial uh, career, you know, uh, you know, um you know, in Italy, he also spent the entirety of his uh, playing uh, career um, in Italy, did uh, Max um, Allegri. So, do you think he would be uh, the right uh, man uh, for uh, Manchester United? Um, is there a possibility, possible chance, you know, that we could reignite um, our interest in Mauricio Pochettino? Don't forget, you know, when in for Mauricio Pochettino, obviously, you know, before we recommended um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in uh, to the football club. Um, obviously, at the time, you know, our preference was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because, obviously, Solskjaer was a cheaper solution. And, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Gunnar Solskjaer uh, does uh, know the traditions um, and that um, of the football club, um, but yeah, there's a possibility chance we could we could reignite our interest in him. Um, obviously, he's not he's no longer our top priority. You know, obviously Pochettino is under serious pressure at Tottenham, just like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is um, at Manchester United. So you know, if the Man United job were to to become vacant, you know, Pochettino was to be sat by Tottenham, then I think maybe Pochettino, you know, would grasp that opportunity, you know, to uh, come uh, to a massive uh, club like uh, Manchester United. Um, um, like I mentioned, the club would probably have to pay around £32 million in compensation to recommend Pochettino win, despite the fact that he hasn't got a release clause in his in his uh, contracts, because I think Pochettino did sign a five-year uh, contract uh, with Tottenham uh, last summer, um, and he signed a five-year contract with them last summer, um, with around what um, £8.5 uh, million pounds a year. The only element of concern I've got about Mauricio Pochettino is that you know he hasn't won out um, in terms of silverware, so that's um, the element of concern I do have about him, but prior to that I think he's a really really good manager you know he's good at developing young players you know he's a uh, well Premier League proven obviously he's had five great years with Tottenham he's now into his sixth season uh, with Tottenham 
obviously he's been managing managing overall since what 2009 so in that aspect you know he's been managing you know for just um, over um, a decade obviously before he was at Tottenham you know he had um, a short uh, spell uh, with Southampton um and obviously before that, you know, um, he was um, Espanol, was um, Mauricio uh, Pochettino. But I still believe, you know, he's uh, currently um, on our um, agenda. Obviously, you know, a lot of Manchester United fans, you know, believe that Arsene Wenger, you know, would be uh, the right uh, candidate because obviously, you know, he's been managerless now uh, for over a year. Don't forget, Arsene Wenger did step down as Arsenal manager back in May 2018, which was obviously, you know, last year. Um, obviously, he served uh, 22 uh, years over Arsenal. And, you know, he had a pretty decent legacy. I thought he had, what, 12 good years um, out of the 22, you know, years, you know, when um, he was uh, with Arsenal. So a lot of Man United fans, you know, believe, you know, he would be uh, the right uh, candidate. You know, there has been uh, some talks um, about uh, Brendan Rodgers and that. Um, but I do believe, you know, Solskjaer, you know, could still be here, you know, by uh, January, um, if I'm uh, going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. Um, we'd, like I mentioned, we do know that he's um, under a uh, serious uh, pressure um, at the football club. And I think recently Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came out and, you know, he fears that Manchester United will sack him, if, of course, if the club uh, do uh, finish him. Um, out of the top, uh, out of the top uh, six uh, this season. Um, obviously, it's good that you know Solskjaer's already making plans uh, for uh, the January transfer window. Um, he's making plans for the January window, and I think he has given Ed Woodward uh, six potential transfer targets because obviously, you know, he can uh, see uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad. You know, there's still areas in the squad you know that uh, do uh, need to be um, addressed. Um, obviously, you know, one of the priority areas is that midfield. We need depth and creativeness in that midfield. We know we also need an attacker. You know, we need someone, you know... Um that can assure, you know, a Manchester United goal, someone that can have depth in that attacking line. Because um, we do look very, very ex exposed now in that attacking line, you know, following the dismissal um, of Romelu Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez and that. Uh, but yeah, we definitely don't need to recommend the striker in um, in January. But like I recently said, I think we need at least five to six more signings, you know, if we are to be back, you know, uh, to being um, a competitive um, elite uh, level uh, football club. And I credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the aspect, you know, that he did recommend, you know, three good players to the squad during the summer. You know, obviously, you know, we spent nearly £150 million on Daniel James and Wan Bissaka and uh, on Harry uh, Maguire. So, you know, I was very, very um, delighted um, about that but you know we didn't address um, all the problematic areas uh, during uh, the summer so some people have said you know we still need to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at least a couple more windows you know to see who else he can recommend into the football club I think Man United have assured you know he will get more money uh, to spend um, in January um, I do uh, doubt very very much that we'll do the vast majority of our transfer business in January I think we'll do the vast majority of our transfer business uh, next summer you know to be um, quite um, honest with you. but I think we could make at least a couple of uh, more uh, signings um, in January Recent reports did say, you know, Man United are prepared to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, with eight more signings in the next two summers. Of course, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, is to be still a Manchester United manager. But, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you can still quite frankly say, is in the process um, of rebuilding this Manchester United team. Because a massive rebuild is needed at the football club. And obviously not analysing the majority of this Manchester United team. It isn't Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's. Obviously, you know, uh, the vast majority of this team is actually Jose Mourinho's. Because don't forget Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players into Manchester United. And um, obviously, you know, uh, Solskjaer now is obviously you not know, inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them. But, you know, you're still getting the vast majority of Manchester United fans anywhere demanding him out of the football club. You know, you're also getting a lot of industries in that believe that he uh, will be uh, gone uh, by uh, Christmas. But you'll still get certain Man United fans. Are you still getting, you know, some form Manchester United players, you know, back in uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer? Uh, um, you know, you had recently Ryan Giggs, come, Ryan Giggs coming out and he said, you know, Solskjaer needs more time at the football club. You know, Rio Ferdinand also believes if, you know, Manchester United would be very naive to sack Solskjaer. And obviously, you know, Gary Neville come out um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, and he did uh, criticise uh, the Manchester United board because, like I recently said, you know, uh, due to um, our inconsistency, you know, I think uh, the vast majority of the blame uh, does uh, stem uh, from the board, if I'm going to be quite honest with you, because the board have been a liability uh, for for uh, several years, you know, with their poor recruitment and their poor uh, selection um, of managers. The board didn't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough during the summer, as they did actually, you know, sure that they would have done. Um, you know, and, you know, I think the board did doc did confirm at the start of this season, like, regardless um, of what happens uh, this season, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's jo job, you know, should be uh, safe, because I think, you know, the board realised that they didn't uh, back him um, enough, um, as, you know, as they currently uh, should um, have done. Um, but, you know, Solskjaer... You know, he's definitely accountable, you know, for our uh, bad uh, run um, of 
performances and results and that he's definitely accountable and you know he has to take some responsibility you know I think some of his tactics and that are questionable and I will admit Manchester United um, are very very tactically inept um, a lot of the blame does stem from a lot of the players because the vast majority of them you know have uh, been um, underperforming um so they've got a, a lot of the players do need a reality check. You know, we, we, there's just no heart, there's no passion, there's no desire in the team. You know, we're not scoring enough goals. You know, we're not even creating chances. We failed to register a single shot on target in the last uh, couple of uh, games. Um, and I think, you know, also some of the blame uh, stems from Ed Woodward. Um, he, he's also um, accountable as well. But I think Ed Woodward, to be quite fair, has been a, reli a liability, you know, uh, for uh, several uh, years. But I was, as I, I was reading, as I was, um, as I was, um, Reading her recent uh, reports, uh, quite recently anywhere, it did say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe at Manchester United for this present time. And I think it did say he's safe for at least uh, the next uh, couple of uh, games. Recent reports indicated out if we do fail to beat Norwich uh, towards the back end of this month, then you know that could put Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job in serious jeopardy. It has been revealed, of course, how much it will cost Manchester United to sack Solskjaer, and obviously, you know, it will cost uh, the club um, around uh, seven million pounds. Obviously, you know, that's around half than what we paid uh, to get rid of Jose Mourinho because I think we paid around uh, £20 million uh, to get rid of uh, Jose Mourinho um, if you do couldn't yeah, remember but you know the board are obviously you know, not going to stick with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, as we all know. Like I recently mentioned, you know, I think the only reason why the board um, have stuck her with Solskjaer um, at this uh, present uh, time is is because obviously you now um, he was um, a club legend um, and that you know he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years and he flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance and, you know, he's got that proven pedigree um, as a player. But I think now if it had been any other manager, you know, they uh, would have uh, currently uh, been uh, sacked. Um, but, yeah, they won't stick with Solskjaer, you know, uh, for uh, long. Um, like I mentioned, you know, managers now, you know, don't get the time, you know, that they would like because, obviously, you know, now this is a new generation. You know, back in the old generation, you know, managers, of course, you know, got the time, you know, that they would have uh, liked and that... Um, but I think one mistake for Manchester United, you know, was giving Solskjaer uh, the job. You know, I don't think you know we uh, we should have um, ever you know uh, given her the job. To be quite uh, honest with you, um, obviously Solskjaer's now been at Manchester United overall for around ten months in total. Obviously, he's been you know a permanent manager for around what seven months, nearly eight months. And I think you know he's enjoyed the difficult seven month tenure uh, with Manchester United. And that because, like I mentioned, you know it has uh, gone um, all wrong. You know uh, since uh, he did uh, get uh, the job uh, permanently. Um, obviously, with him back, you know, when he was uh, the interim manager um, in a uh, three-month uh, period, you know, Solskjaer, you know, did really, really well, you know, he exceeded expectations, you know, the results were good, the performances were really, really good, and he got the best out of these uh, group um, of players, um, but um, yeah, it's just since the foreground one, you know, since he has uh, got uh, the job uh, permanently, and you know, Solskjaer is aware that he's under serious uh, pressure um, at the football club, and I do like Solskjaer in some aspects as well, because you know, he has got um, a lot of uh, honesty, you know, he has got a lot of faith um, in his uh, young um, upcoming players, I also believe that Solskjaer maybe is considering loaning you know, quite a few young players out, you know, um, in January and that. Because like I did mention, you know, I don't think all of them, you know, are going to be um, a success at um, Manchester United. But like I said, you know, we have got a lot of young players um, in the squad, you know, that are developing um, and trying to um, improve. Um and all that. So, like I mentioned, you know, it's good uh, that we're making uh, plans for January. But, you know, my other element of concern about Solskjaer is, you know, he doesn't, have any intuition at all whatsoever as a manager. You know, he hasn't really got that managerial um, experience in that. And this is another thing, you know, that makes me think, you know, he won't succeed as a manager. You know, before he came to Manchester United, obviously, you know, he won a couple of Norwegian titles and mould. Obviously, before he was at Mould, you know, he, he had a really, really short tenure with Cardiff. I think he only lasted around uh, 30 uh, games uh, with Cardiff. Then, obviously, he got sacked because, obviously, he ended up, you know, getting uh, Cardiff uh, relegated. But, you know, obviously, a lot of Manchester United fans fear now, you know, if we are to keep him in charge for this season, he could end up, you know, getting uh, the club uh, relegated. And, like I mentioned, you know, we're only sitting two points above relegation at the moment, you know. So, you can quite frankly say at this present time, we are facing a um, relegation battle. Um... And uh, yes, because we are sitting at 12th firm in the league. So far this season, we've only won two games out of eight league games. We've drawn three and we've lost three. So we've only registered uh, nine points uh, from eight uh, league games. And we know, obviously, you know, that's uh, nowhere uh, near uh, good enough you know, to our uh, standards. Because like I mentioned recently, reflecting on the size and the potential of this football club, you know, we sh and the history of this football club, you know, we should be in much more um, of a commanding uh, position, you know, than we're in uh, now. Because like I said at the end of last season, I also 
also, I think I also mentioned it at the start of this season that for Solskjaer's tenure to work out Manchester United, he has got to exceed expectations. And I did say our expectations this season you know, we'll be able to finish him um, in that top four and, you know, perhaps uh, maybe win some silverware. And obviously, we want to finish in that top four. So that means we can obviously, you know, get her back um, into the uh, Champions League. Um, but I've already disregarded her, the top four, you know, even though it is um, early, early on um, in the season. Um, and I think, you know, if things do continue to persist, you know, I think, you know, we'll we'll even we'll even struggle, you know, to finish um, in the top seven uh, this season. I do believe, you know, uh, that's um, how bad, you know, um, it's gone. Um, but you like I mentioned, you know, uh, Solskjaer is aware of the you know of the expectations that you know expectations that you know he has to um, exceed. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, he's a tenure um, He's not going to be, uh, become a successful um, at Manchester United and that. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, we have got big ambitions uh, for the future. And obviously, you know, those ambitions are to get back to being competitive, get back to winning silverware and that. Um, and, you know, Solskjaer, you know, will not bring this uh, back uh, to the football club. I want him to, but he's just obviously, you know, not uh, going to uh, work out um, under him, you know, um, unfortunately. Um, and in a way, I do feel sorry for him because like I do keep mentioning, you know, I think the club have put him in a very, very um, difficult uh, position uh, so this is obviously you know why I do uh, feel uh, sorry for him um, but yeah like I mentioned you know definitely more signings are needed at Manchester United um, like I mentioned that we need at least five or six more players um, definitely even despite the fact that a lot of players um, have left uh, since uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer's arrival um, I still believe you know these more players that do need to leave the football club because you know these still problematic players here now um, at Manchester United um yeah, so there is still uh, lots uh, to address um, in that um, in the squad. Um, but like I said, analysing our recruitment policy, you know, um, isn't uh, too good, you know, to be um, quite um, honest with you. Um, you know, it isn't too good. You know, Solskjaer, I think, was talking about our recruitment policy, you know, throughout uh, the course of um, the summer. But like I mentioned, you know, with our uh, failure uh, to qualify for the Champions League, I think that was one of the main factor reasons, you know, that went against us during the summer. Uh, because obviously, if you're not in Champions League football, then obviously it's going to be harder to attract uh, players to the elite level. So this is why probably... A lot of players had element of concerns about joining the football club um, in the summer, but I do believe the players, you know, we was in for, you know, in the summer, we'll probably go back in for some of them in January. You know, maybe we'll uh, leave uh, some um, until uh, next summer. Um, Solskjaer, I think, you know, wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British players, you know, like he did do earlier on this summer, if he is still to be um, here uh, by uh, January. But like I mentioned, we have got um, a lot of uh, players um, on our uh, current um, agenda. Um... I think it is almost uh, assured that we will uh, sign uh, Mario Mandzukic um, in January, um, as I did um, update you um, on the previous uh, video uh, this morning, uh, because recent reports have said that you know, we've identified him as one of our top priority targets. Uh, he's going to cost the club a reasonable figure, like I mentioned. You know, we're, we're, we're only going to have to pay in the excess of around £9 or £10 million pounds for him. Reportedly, you know, we're set to offer him a, a, an 18 month contract, which is obviously a year and a half, uh, and we're prepared to pay him around 4.4 million a year which equates to around 85,000 uh, uh, pounds um, a week because don't forget we inquired um, about uh, getting a uh, Mario Mandzukic uh, towards uh, the back end um, of the summer transfer window but I think the board have got some element of concerns about recommending him in it's basically mainly reflecting on his age because Mario Mandzukic um, is now what uh, 33 uh, years in of age but since Maurizio Sarri got recommended in at Juventus he's obviously no, not in uh, Maurizio Sarri's plans he hasn't played a, a single minute of football, you know, this season uh, for uh, Juventus. Um, but, um, yeah, so he's actually, you know, um, a cheap um, alternative. And I do think, you know, he would be a good, adequate uh, replacement uh, for Romelu Lukaku. You know, at least if we get him in, we've got more experience in that front line. He'll also, you know, add more depth. And he can show the likes of Rashford, Martial and Daniel James how to be a more um, effective um, in the box. And, you know, he's had a great career as Mario Mandzukic. Um, obviously, you know... He's been at Juventus now, is it around five years or something um, like that? Um, he scored 62 goals, I think something like that. No, 44 goals, sorry, and 162 um, appearances. Um, I think for the in, in the entirety of his career so far, he scored 188 goals in around 476 uh, games um, as Mario uh, Mandzukic. Um, and he's still under contract uh, with Juventus um, until uh, 2021. Uh, but we are convinced, you know, we can't uh, get um, a deal um, over the line for him. So if we we are to get him in in January. Obviously, you no, know, it will be um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, fourth 
player you know that he's bought you know since he uh, came in um, at Manchester United because like I mentioned he's already recommended you know three uh, players um, into the squad so if we do sign Mario Mandzukic it'll you know it'll take our it'll take um, our spending up to around £155 million pounds under the um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer area because I think we've spent around £145 uh, million pounds there so far Um but we do need a goal scorer in that. And I think Mario Mandzukic will be able to win his them goals. You know, maybe he could emulate into like, you know, um, his Latin um, Um But yeah, you know, and there's obviously, obviously a lot of um, other players um, on our agenda, you know, that have been, you know, giving you, nu- giving you an update on um, on a regular basis. Obviously, there's been a lot of talks about Declan Rice uh, going on quite recently. And like I mentioned, Declan Rice is predominantly a defensive midfielder. And I probably think Man United need a holding midfielder. You know, he can also play as a centre-back, but he's actually, you know, predominantly um, a defensive uh, midfielder. Despite the fact that Declan Rice um, is only uh, 20 uh, years of age, uh, despite the fact that he's only uh, 20 uh, years of age, you know, I think um, he has cemented himself as a regular um, in West Ham's uh, midfield. In total for West Ham, he has made 78 appearances in all competitions. Um, and I think, you know, obviously the vast majority of those appearances have come in the Premier League. You know, he's made 69 of those um, appearances um, in the Premier League. You know, he's been at West Ham now for several years. He's flourished under Manuel Pellegrini's guidance. You know, he's under contract to West Ham um, until uh, 2024. Um, but yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, he would uh, be the right calibre player for Manchester United. You know, I think he would bring that, you know, de- add that debt firm in that uh, midfield and that. Uh, but reportedly, you know, we may have to pay around £70 million. To him. And I think we are preparing to pay up to around uh, £70 million pounds, uh, for uh, Declan Rice. So he's another player um, on our um, agenda. Um, we know there's obviously, you know, been a lot of talks about, you know, Moussa Dembele from uh, Leon again you know we could have to we are, we'll probably have to pay another, a substantial amount for Moussa Dembele you know we'll probably have to pay um, in the excess of around £71 million pounds to get him in uh, whether Man United are willing to pay that or not I do not know but this is what Leon are demanding because I think recent reports indicated out saying that Moussa Dembele feels unsettled uh, with Leon um, even though he is uh, only in his uh, second uh, season uh, with Leon obviously last season uh, was his uh, debut uh, season uh, with Leon um Leon um, paid £20 million to him last summer, don't forget, uh, from Celtic. He is under contract to Leon until 2023. Um, obviously, you know, um, you know, he's only 23, like I mentioned. Um, but yeah, he's an out-and-out number nine. And I think, you know, he would be able to show goals for Manchester United. He scored quite a lot of goals for Leon. He also, during his tenure at Celtic, scored quite a lot of goals. You know, he did really, really well when he was at Celtic. Don't forget, before he was at Celtic, he was at Fulham and he actually you know, began his uh, senior uh, career uh, with Fulham. So he's another player um, on our agenda. Don't forget, you know, James Madison um, is on um, our uh, current um, agenda. You know, James Madison um, is predominantly an attacking midfielder. He can also, you know, play out um, on the left because Brendan Rodgers has put James Madison um, on the left uh, quite um, a few uh, times, but he is uh, predominantly, you know, um, an attacking uh, midfielder. But like I mentioned, you know, James Madison, I think, again, I think, you know, he would be the right calibre player for Manchester United. Um, obviously, he's got that experience now in the Premier League. Um, Obviously, he's now into his second season with Leicester. Obviously, last season, you know, was his, um, you know, debut season in the Premier League, you know, with Leicester. He didn't half make a meal of it last season, you know. And I think, you know, during his, you know, during his time so far with Leicester, you know, reflects on his performances, you know, his valuation um, has persistently grown. Um, you know, Leicester only paid around £20 million to him last summer uh, for Norwich, if you do remember rightly. Um, but he was fantastic um, in his uh, debut season. He created more chances than any other player last season in the Premier League. He is um, only uh, 22 uh, years um, of age. Um, he's still got four years left on his current uh, deal uh, with Leicester. Uh, but if Leicester, you know, are willing to do um, any business uh, with James Madison, you know, again, he's going to cost the club a substantial amount, you know, where... Leicester will probably demand the same sort of figure, you know, to, as did as they did do uh, for Harry uh, Maguire. So we'll probably have to pay around seventy or eighty million pounds, you know, to recommend uh, James uh, Madison um, in uh, to the football club. But yeah, he's another uh, player um, on our uh, current um, agenda. But yeah, definitely more signings um, are needed um, at Manchester United uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, But like I mentioned, you know, everything needs to improve at the football club. You know, a lot of players need to step up to the plate. 
Um, our way form also needs to improve because it is now 11 away games that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's had now without a win at Manchester United. We haven't won away away from home since the PSG game last season when we did produce uh, that miraculous comeback. That's obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's most uh, iconic moment as manager. Um, you know, home form needs to improve because I think our home form's also you know been very very bad. You know, the style of player needs to um, improve. Um, but yeah, there's a lot a lot of um, you know, it's I'm actually ashamed to be a Manchester United fan at this present time well I've actually been ashamed to be a Manchester United fan um, in the last uh, six um, or seven years obviously you know of our uh, inconsistent you know you know where we have uh, currently uh, been um you know of our uh, poor you know um you know, where uh, we have uh, been in that. And, you know, a lot of money, you know, has been uh, spent um, at Manchester United, you know, like I uh, do uh, keep uh, mentioning, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson era. You know, obviously, you know, I think it's around an estimated guess, 700 odd, maybe 800 million pounds that's been spent at the football club since the Ferguson era in all the other managerial uh, Marreras. So that's just under a billion pounds. And that's not taking into account, you know, what was uh, spent um, under um, Alex Ferguson. Obviously, if you want to take into account, you know, what was spent under Alex Ferguson, obviously, you know, it's way um, over a billion pounds uh, that's been uh, spent um, at the football club. But reflecting back under the Alex uh, Ferguson Marrera, you know, he did spend money, but he also developed a lot of young players. You know, he also controlled the transfer policies. Um, he also controlled the contracts and that. And, you know, he had, we had 26 uh, years of um, success um, under Ferguson. We had a lot of great players and that. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, we did uh, boss uh, the transfer markets. Um, and, uh, you know, I, ho I did say now, I'm hopeful that this team now, at this day and age, you know, can, you know, replicate what the team did under Alex Ferguson. And that, you know, there's actually a couple of players here still from the Ferguson area, you know, but not uh, many. Um, but like I mentioned now, you know, we're no longer under the Ferguson era. You know, this is now a different era with different players and different groups, of course, uh, that uh, we are uh, building and that. Um, but like I said, take into account, you know, Alex Ferguson, you know, didn't win out in his first four years at Manchester United and that. But we know back then, as I do keep mentioning that, managers, you know, do get the time, you know, that they would have liked them, but they don't now. But, you know, Ferguson was actually on the verge of getting the sack after that four years, but he didn't. And then, obviously, you know, look what he uh, went um, and accomplished in that. We had, like I mentioned, you know, we had 20 odd years of success under him so you can take that into account you know with Solskjaer and that maybe he does need to be given the same length of time that Ferguson got given you know to you know gain success at Man United but I just don't think you know he will um, to be uh, quite um, honest with you and um, but you know I Solskjaer definitely can't invoke Ferguson's legacy at Man United and I don't think any manager could invoke uh, Ferguson's uh, legacy to be quite um, honest with you and that's obviously you know something uh, we have uh, got to um, accept uh, basically but you know it's it's worse under the Oligan and Solskjaer era, you know, than what it was under the Jose Mourinho era. It's even worse than 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 what it was um, under the uh, David uh, Moyes era, um, because you know last season we finished sixth, and you know that's actually you know, I think the lowest we've finished since the other David uh, Moyes era. But um, like I mentioned. You know, Jose Mourinho. The, these are the reasons why it didn't work out under him because obviously the the brand of football was atrocious. It was part of the bus football. You know, Mourinho had bad disputes with the board and he had uh, bad disputes over the, the, some of the top players. Well, all the top players, should I say. The board weren't back in the signings that I wanted to recommend in, uh, to the football club uh, last summer and that. So these are the reasons why it didn't uh, work out um, under uh, Jose Mourinho. And Jose Mourinho had a two and a half year tenure at Manchester United and he did win the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season and that. In my own personal opinion, I think the football club recommended Jose Mourinho in too late. You know, if we'd have recommended him in after Alex Ferguson's, you know, departure, uh, I think, you know, it may have been a different scenario uh, with Manchester United and Ferguson should have recommended, you know, Mourinho in at that time when he retired instead of, you know, recommended David Moyes and that was one mistake Ferguson did make and the only mistake he did was obviously, you know, where recommend you know where uh, David Moyes in because David Moyes obviously you know, only lasted 10 months at Manchester United so he's actually the manager that's had the shortest tenure with the football club you know since you know where uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera and that um, but like I mentioned you know Solskjaer's our fourth permanent manager um, obviously like I mentioned we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers and you know even though we have all this had to three managers you know uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera um, but Solskjaer, you know, he's not the right man, you know, to uh, take uh, Manchester United uh, forward, you know, uh, let's uh, be honest. Um, 
And yeah, so and I think also like I mentioned, the board we need to see structural changes at the club as well. And I think the board do need to assure uh, these structural changes. You know, whether they do or not, um, I do not know. To be um, quite um, honest with you, um, I was disappointed. You know, as well, you know that we didn't uh, get um, a direct to them of footballing. You know that also you know um, infuriated me, infuriated me a lot uh, because I did say you know that's one of the structural changes we you know we do uh, need um, at the football club. Um, and obviously we do know there has been a lot of talks, uh, well a lot of speculation going on recently about Edwin van der Sar you know he said at some point in his future you know he would like to make a return back to the uh, football club to become obviously our new director um, of football and I think Ed Woodward and that and you know believes he would be the right candidate and I think Edwin van der Sar you know would be reliable uh, to um, oversee um, our transfer business um, he's obviously and he would be reliable because he's got the experience and plus Edwin van der Sar knows the traditions of the football club and that does don't forget he served six years with us you know as a goalkeeper from 2005 to 2011 and now at this present time he is the chief executive um, at Ajax and now he's into his fourth season with Ajax and I've been actually you know, very very impressed with the work um, he has uh, done there uh, with Ajax uh, but yeah I'd love him to come you know make a return back to the uh, football club you could arguably say if we'd got that direct to the football in during the summer then maybe in that aspect um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, would have uh, been uh, back to more you could actually you know uh, say that um You could um, actually uh, say that and that. But um, like I did say, you know, Manchester United, you know, haven't only spent big on players in the last, what, six or seven years. You know, we've also now, as it stands, you know, uh, got uh, players um, on big uh, contracts. Obviously, you know, you've got Marcus Rashford on, what, 300 grand a week. You know, you've got Martial on 200 grand a week. You've got Paul Popper on 290 grand a week. You've got Harry Maguire on around 200 grand a week. You've got Jesse Lingard on just over 100 grand a week. You've got David De Gea on 375 grand a week. You know, David De Gea is the highest played highest played at the football club and he's actually the highest paid goalkeeper um, in the world and that. Um so yeah, you know, we have uh, got uh, players um, on big uh, contracts, but I will agree, you know, Manchester United, you know, do um, overpay for our players, like I said, we've done it um, in recent years and that, you know, I thought, you know, at the time that we bought Lukaku, Lukaku, you know, I thought we definitely, you know, um, overpaid uh, for him, obviously, you know, we paid uh, £75 million uh, for uh, Romelu Lukaku from Everton, um, Lukaku obviously, you know, had a two-year tenure at Manchester United, and to be fair, some people will pinpoint out saying maybe it was a mistake for Manchester United getting rid of Lukaku uh, because Lukaku actually was exceptional um, in his first season you know didn't uh, really replicate that um, in his second season that but he was a proven goal scorer because his pedigree in the Premier League you know was really really good in terms of like you know scoring goals and that um, but you know obviously you know when we did get him in anywhere with Lukaku at the time you know obviously we had a lot of concerns about him you know his first touch you know, um, obviously big being a big game bottler and that, but he did score in some pivotal games for Manchester United. But I was actually happy with the money that we did generate from his departures. We got £70 odd million pounds back, so we did basically recoup the money that we did pay for him from Everton um, a couple of uh, years ago. Um, like, and I think we also overpaid for Harry Maguire. I will agree on that aspect. We did overpay for him. You know, we paid £80 million pounds, uh, for uh, Harry uh, Maguire. Um, don't get me wrong. I think he's settled in really, really well at Manchester United. And, you know, he has addressed our defensive deficiencies in his distribution. That's really, really good. But he wasn't uh, worth um, £80 million. Pounds. I'd say he'd probably been worth around maybe £40 or £50 million pounds at the top. Over that, I said, you know, you know, it would have been uh, too much. But, you know, we did overpay for him because, obviously, Leicester didn't really want to lose him. This is why uh, they demanded um, a substantial um, amount uh, for uh, the player. But he does show, to be fair, you know, great leadership um, in that uh, back line. You know, he has uh, still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development um, in him, but he has done really, really well, to be fair. Um, I think we are definitely overpaid for Fred last summer. That's another player we overpaid for. You know, we paid just under £50 million for Fred. And, you know, he hasn't really settled in as a Manchester United player. I think he's had a good couple of games for the club. You know, he's done well in the odd game or two this season. He has played in. You know, he did well uh, towards... Uh, the back end of last season but he hasn't performed to nowhere near to the same sort of level you know as he did do uh, when he was um, at Shat to the Nesk because saying it he was actually an exceptional uh, player um, at Shat to the Nesk um, but yeah you know we're definitely known for um, overpaying uh, for our players and you know also you know we seem to let players go for next to nothing as well when we've obviously you not know, overpaid for them and like I mentioned there's you know been prime examples of it you know this summer as well and we've done that um, in recent years you know you know, Damien, you know, we let him go for just over £1 million um, after, you know, 
paying just over £12 million for him from Torino back in 2015. And, you know, Damien served four years at Man United and it was no surprise that I left the football club and I'm happy he left. I'm just, you know, I was actually infuriated with how much we let him go for, basically. Um, if we'd have got rid of him last year or a couple of years ago, we could have maybe at least recouped the money that we did pay for him from Torino uh, back in uh, 2015. So that was bad business from the football club. So we lost out of money there. You know, and the Herrera... You know, that was one mistake from the football club, you know, uh, also, you know, uh, letting him go. Uh, we let him go on a free transfer, you know, the, the club obviously, you know, let his uh, contract uh, run down and we let him go on a free transfer after Man United paid just under £30 million pounds for him from Bilbao back in uh, 2014. And I think analysing the majority of his tenure with Man United, he was mainly consistent and we know that the difference, you know, um, and the Herrera, you know, uh, did uh, make him um, in that uh, midfield. Um but yeah, I think it was a mistake from the football club, you know, of course, uh, letting him uh, go. Um, definitely, yeah, without um, a shadow of a doubt. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, there is a lot of players, you know, that really, you know, uh, do uh, need to uh, step up uh, to the plate, um, in my um, opinion, as I do uh, keep uh, mentioning, you know, Rashford has got to book, book, buckle up um, his ideas, um, you know, he's been very, very um, inconsistent uh, so far uh, this season, um, as Rashford. And, you know, he, you know, reflects on his status of the football club, you know, should be performing much better. Um, and he's enjoyed a difficult time for quite some time now. And that that's obviously in comparison to his time, you know, when he first uh, broke um, into the uh, senior squad, uh, Rashford. I know, he, 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 you know, he was out with injury, you know, not uh, too uh, long ago. You know, he had uh, been um, out uh, with a groin problem. A lot of people believe that Marcus Rashford, you know, um, has uh, got... Um, He's actually you now um, overrated and stuff, but I still say Rashford is definitely the long-term uh, solution uh, for uh, the football club. Uh, in my um, opinion, you know we have got to uh, give him a uh, time, um, and um, yeah, but I have been you know very very um, disappointed with him. You know he hasn't scored uh, since uh, the opening day of the season against Chelsea, um, and Rashford, um, don't forget, signed the new long-term contract earlier on in the summer. Rashford in total for the football club has made 180 appearances. 180 appearances and scored 48 goals. He's obviously, you know, 30 of them goals have come in the Premier League for him and that. Um, he's not, I think he's actually now uh, nearly uh, 22 uh, years of age, um, is Rashford, but he needs to step up to the plate. Jesse Lingard needs to step up to the plate. You know, he's also been very, very inconsistent. I've got the same thoughts about Lingard as I have of Rashford. Reflect on these states at the football club, you know, he should be, you know, putting a much more uh, better uh, performances um, out. So I have been extremely disappointed with Lingard. Obviously, we do know that he's uh, out uh, with a hamstring um, injury um, at the moment. Um, his performances have been absolutely um, atrocious Jesse Lingard um, a lot of players have just basically you know, um, underperformed I think um, you know Pereira he hasn't been too good you know this season I think he's had one good game this season that was in uh, the game um, against Arsenal but you know I would still you know give uh, Pereira you know, uh, more uh, time um, at the football club um, but yeah the vast majority of them of course um, have um, underperformed um you know, um, in my um, opinion. Um, but yeah, they have. And uh, like I said, you know, Man United... Um, have uh, got um, a lot of um, injuries. Um, you, you can take that into account, but obviously you can't use it um, as an excuse. Reflect to them on our uh, bad uh, run um, performances, but you know we have, you know, actually you now got um, a lot of um, injuries. But the good news is, you know, the vast majority of our players uh, that are now um, injured, you know, should uh, regain a uh, full finish, you know, for the game um, against uh, Liverpool um, on Sunday, um, which is obviously you no know, very very good news. So I expect to see Anthony Martial back. Um, I expect to see Luke Shaw back because uh, Martial and Luke Shaw. Have both missed the last what six or seven games for Manchester United um, in all competitions um, obviously due to injury Martial's been out with a thigh injury Luke Shaw's been out with a hamstring injury Anthony Martial um, of course you know um Enjoyed a great start to this season before he sustained um, his fine injury. In that I think he scored two goals and provided one assist in you know in the opening uh, three uh, games. Um, obviously, Marshall now is into his uh, fifth season um, as a Manchester United player. Um, obviously, he scored over fifty goals for the football club in all competitions, um, and I think you know. He's a very very good player. You know he does add, add that inspiration, that attacking further the pitch, further the pitch. You know, he brings that fluidity in that. And I think a lot of things um, have improved um, about um, his game. And 
if Anthony Martial, you know, does keep the consistency up and he can avoid any more injuries this season, I think he can score a lot of goals uh, for uh, Manchester United. But yeah, he should be back for Liverpool um, on Sunday. You know, it brings back memories for Martial if he can play on Sunday because don't forget he scored on his debut against Liverpool back under the uh, Louis uh, Van Gaal um, because we got Martial at uh, just uh, the age um, of 19. Uh, with Luke Shaw, like I said, you know, he's a very, very imperative player. Like I mentioned, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, Luke Shaw being injury prone and, you know, Luke Shaw is an injury prone player. But he's, 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 I think, you know, you can't put him... To the, to the same extent, you know, as, you know, Eric Bay, because obviously Eric Bay is a lot more injury prone, you know, than Luke Shaw. Uh, but with Luke Shaw, you know, he's analysing the majority of his Man United career. Um, I think he's done well. He's had, he had a bad spell under Mourinho and, you know, he also, with his injuries and that, but prior to his injuries and that, I think, you know, he's mainly done well. He won the double player of the double player of the season last season, reflecting on his impressive performances. But Luke Shaw, you know, has been a big, big miss. Um... So, yeah, so them two definitely should be back. Like I mentioned, Lingard should be back. Um, Aaron Wambasak has obviously, you know, been um, out here with Vilnius. You know, he definitely should be back. He's missed the last two league games for Manchester United. I think he's actually missed the last three in all competitions. A lot of people believe that Aaron Wambasak, you know, has been uh, one of our most uh, consistent signings. And I do agree um, on that um, aspect and that. Um, I'm glad we did get that right back in that we wanted. And, you know, he will, I think, you know, he will be our fullbacker for the next uh, decade. But, yeah, Basaka has been out with tonsillitis recently. We know that Eric Bay, obviously, you know, won't be back for Liverpool. He's out until the end of December or the new year with a knee injury. Um, as, obviously, you know, um, Eric Bay. Uh, Fossil Mensu is obviously, you know, still um, out uh, with injury. You know, Lindelof's obviously recently been um, out uh, with a back injury. Um, this is why he missed uh, the 1-0 the defeat uh, to Newcastle, obviously, in that particular game. Alex Twanzebe, you know, had full full uh, Lindelof. Uh, role, um, but yeah, Lindelof should be back for Liverpool. Um, there's a gro there's growing concerns about Paul Pogba. You know, I was reading recent uh, reports, and they were saying that you know Paul Pogba you know, could uh, miss uh, the game um, against Liverpool on Sunday. I was reading recent reports, and it did say that the fitness staff fear that he could be out um, until uh, the end of this month um, or the beginning um, of November. Obviously, you know with this ongoing foot injury that he actually you now has been. Um, you know, you know that is that the um, that's been uh, surrounding uh, the player uh, for um, the, a number um, of weeks. Uh, but Paul Pop missed, has missed quite a few games this season. You know, due to um, injury in that. Um, he's also another player. You know that uh, does uh, need to uh, step up uh, to the plate because Paul Pop has mainly enjoyed the difficult time at Manchester United. You know, in comparison to his time. You know, when he was um, at Juventus because he did he did um, have uh, four uh, good uh, years there uh, with Juventus. Did probably will still know. You know the difference he does uh, make in that uh, midfield, um, but hopefully you know he can be uh, back uh, for uh, Sunday um, against uh, Liverpool. Um, like I mentioned, you know Mason Greenwood's recently you know uh, been um, out uh, with back injury, um, as you um, all uh, do know. Um, but um yeah, but it's a big big game on Sunday uh, for Manchester United, and it's a game of course uh, that we obviously you know uh, do um, have to uh, win. Um, obviously you know we're massive um, underdogs you know going into this game because obviously you know Liverpool. You know, are obviously strides ahead of us at the moment. We all know that, and Liverpool have enjoyed them a really, really uh, good uh, start to this season. You know, they've you know they've got a hundred percent record so far. You know, they've won eight out of eight, and they've obviously you now registered twenty four points from a possible twenty four. Um, and yeah, you know, Liverpool have got some you know really, really good players. You know, I think they have got a few injuries. I think Salah's out with an ankle injury at the moment. Allenson's been out with injury. Uh, they've obviously got Nathaniel Klein out until January with injury. Nathaniel Klein's actually injury prone for Liverpool. Joe Matip, I think, um, is out uh, with injury at this moment. Shakir is obviously out, I think, with injury. Um, but they've still got some, you know, uh, very, very um, good uh, players of Liverpool. And, you know... Manchester United and Liverpool, you know, is still a, an iconic fixture. It's a massive, massive game. You know, they are the two most successful clubs um, in England, you know, um, historically. Um, and obviously, you know, reflect on the success that both teams have had, you know. Liverpool, you know, are obviously going for the Premier League this season. They was unlucky not to win it last season. You know, Liverpool haven't won it all in all, you know, for uh, three uh, decades, you know. But they haven't ever, ever won the Premier League since he got found in, what, 92 um, and 93. Um... But yeah, still um, a very, very big game. But Liverpool's record at Old Trafford, you know, is actually you not know, very, very poor. You know, they haven't, you know, won there, 
well, they haven't. They've only won twice at Old Trafford, um, you know, in the Premier League. You know, in the last uh, ten uh, years, it was nil nil um, at Old Trafford uh, last season. Um, but yeah, I think Liverpool are probably going to win uh, the league uh, this season. You know, they're sitting eight points in front um, of Manchester City. I think they're sitting fifteen points um, in front of uh, Moz. Um, but um, yeah, you know, Joran Klopp's a pretty decent manager. Uh, like I said, he hasn't won much in terms of silverware and that. You know, he only won his first major honour with Liverpool last season, you know, when they did uh, win you know, the Champions League. You know, they've won it six times. Um, obviously, before Klopp... <coughs> before Klopp was at Liverpool, you know, Klopp did win a couple of titles there uh, with Dortmund. But yeah, it is uh, going to be um, a massive uh, game, like I mentioned. And I think regardless whether we win or lose, you know, I think you know Solskjaer you know, will still be at Manchester United. But um, that's mainly it, guys. And you know, I just wanted to give you your news about you know Laurent Blanc and all the rest of the other news. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do consider subscribing, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very soon.